In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to add SRAM for the DE2-115. This is using the SRAM, this is using the SRAM IP core that's built by Altera. So it's specific to these boards. So first, what we're going to want to do is find where our system is located. So Altera, my systems, and take our most recent system that's working, copy it, and then rename it. So system six. Open up the Cordis project file. Take a look at our system. This is our system that we had in our, our last video and works. So what we're going to want to do is open up QSYS. Open up our system. Here we go. So we're going to search for SRAM in our IP catalog. Find under University Program Memory SRAM SSRAM. Double click on that to open it up. And it's going to ask us what board are we using this for. And it's DE2-115, since that's the uh, university program that we have downloaded. It only supports up to DE2-115. So if you want to support like a DE2 um, or DE0 or DE1, any of those boards, you can't use 15.0, the most recent version of the software as of making this video, to make, the, to make your system. You're going to have to use an older version of Cordis. So click finish, it adds it. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is our clock, we're connected to our system clock. Our reset, we're gonna want connected to our clock reset and our JTAG reset. Our external interface, we're gonna to want to export that. So double click that and let's call this SRAM. And as I see this, let's come up here and rename this real fast. So right click, rename. Let's call it SRAM so we know what it is. And our Avalon uh, slave. So this is where we come into um, a bit of a problem. Um, do we want this to be our primary memory? Which currently right now we just have on-chip memory as our primary memory. Um, but do we want SRAM to be our primary memory? And SRAM is bigger, so yes, we would want SRAM to be our primary memory. So we want this to be both um, data and instruction master. But in doing that, we need to come up here and change a few things. So first, we're going to want to make sure that this is locked at zero and scroll up here to our on-chip memory and make sure this is just an uncheck the um, data master or the instruction master and make sure it's just data master. So data master is the only one I want connected and instruction master I want to deselect. I want to unlock this because it's going to be interfering with um, our memory mapping. And let's come take a look and see what else is interfering with our memory mapping. Um, our JTAG, and it looks like our JTAG is as well. So let's unlock that. And then system assign base addresses. And it still looks like. All right, there we go. Everything right there should be good. Let's relock both of these. And now there's one more thing we need to do since we changed our primary memory. We need to go back into our Neos2 processor. So double click on our Neos2 processor, go to vectors, and we want to change this from on-chip memory to SRAM. Change this one from on-chip to SRAM as well for both our reset and exception vectors. And since we're done there, we're good. And it looks like we're having an overlap with our sysid. So our system ID, let's unlock that and go to system assign base addresses looks like we're now having an overlap with our green leds so let's undo green leds we're probably going to have overlaps on all of these so let's just unlock all of them except SRAM, keep SRAM locked at zero. So system, sign base addresses. I didn't unlock these, either. my bad. So unlock both of those and this one. And then now go to system, assign base addresses and everything should be okay. So now let's lock everything.
And let's take a look at our messages. And all the messages seem like they're standard. Save this system. Generate, generate HDL, very log and create the block diagram. Click generate. All right, our gen generation was complete. No errors, no warnings, that's good. Let's come down here, uh, back to Cordis. Delete our current system. Um, double click on the workspace. Let's find our block diagram for system six. Open, open. Line that back up with our clock. Make sure everything's connected correctly. So clock, green LED looks good. Key one, key two, key three. Red LEDs, reset, switches. Oh, our switches are not in the right spot. Select that, move those down to where our switches are. And as you can see, we have all of these other system so we have a lot more pins on here so all these pins are control pins um, to control the actual chip because now we have everything instead of being on the chip so on the FPGA so the FPGA can do it really fast control everything it's internal we don't actually have to assign pins to anything we have a chip over here now that has all of this that needs information from the FPGA to know hey what's the base address what do I need um, where do I need to send the data? All of that needs to be set using these pins. So again, purple is outputs, green is bidirectional, and we have no inputs on this. So let's come over here, add an output, add one, and then flip it. And instead of making a new one, having to flip them all, let's copy it and paste it for every single one of these. All right, and then we also have a one bi-directional. So let's come up here and add a bi-directional pin. Let's add it off to the side and flip it and bring it in here. Okay, now let's add all of our pins. Again, dragging from our system to the pin so that we get the conduits for these that have multiple bits that go to them instead of just single bits like these ones down here. Now let's name them. So the first one, we're gonna name that SRAM S-R-A-M, all capitals, bracket 15, dot dot zero, close bracket. The next one is going to be SRAM, SRAM, all capitals, underscore A-D-D-R, open bracket 19, dot dot zero, close bracket. The next one we're going to name SRAM underscore LB underscore in. This next one we're going to name SRAM underscore UB underscore in. This one we're going to name SRAM underscore CE underscore in getting all these names from uh, that CSV file that's will be um, in the documentation on fpga.shawnwrawl.com you can go find that and that's an easier way of looking it up um, I have it off on a, another screen over here so you can't see it but that's where I'm getting these names from the next one would be sram underscore oe underscore in this next one is going to be sram underscore wee underscore in. And there we go. We have everything named as it should be. Hopefully I didn't make any typos. And save our file real fast. And everything looks good. Let's compile. 
All right, we can look down here. Cortis 2, full compilation was successful. Zero errors, 492 warnings. That's great. That's what we want to see. All right, let's go back and double check, make sure everything has been assigned. And as coming down looking at it, um, I see my first one, the pins didn't get assigned correctly. Um, let's take a look as to why that didn't happen, why my pins weren't assigned for my SRAM. Um, and looking at it, I made a mistake. I called this SRAM instead of SRAM underscore DQ. And that's what it should be. Um, so now I have to save and recompile. So let's come up here, save, and start compilation. All right, it says Quartus 2 full compilation was successful, zero, successful, zero errors, 475 warnings. That's good. Let's go take a look and make sure. Yeah, so now my pin has been assigned correctly as I would like it to. All written documentation is available at fpga.seanwraw.com. Go check it out, download it, and try it out for yourself.